Hi guys, and welcome back to Backlog Therapy. I mean, Switch Up. Uh, I'm over this whole backlog worry thing. I'm just going to enjoy buying loads of games. I'm never going to stop. I, I, I've, I think I've accepted it. Before I tell you who's won a code from last week's video, a massive thank you from Glenn and I, uh, reaching 175,000 subscribers. I know it seems like an arbitrary number to most people, but for us, that is thousands of hours of work with no views and then thousands of hours of work with some views and now thousands of hours of work with quite a few views and yeah it's incredible and this week we're going to look at jrpgs there are some incredible ones on sale at the moment most of those sales finish on the fifth so we have to be quite quick but i want to highlight a few and end with a hidden gem now it's not all jrpgs there's a couple of just very cheap good games in here as well and big shout out to mexico we have put your prices at the bottom of this video after so many of you requested it so hopefully that's helpful. I'm also going to put the names of some winning comments on the screen from last week's video. You guys have won a US region copy of Children of Mortar and if you want to take part this week simply subscribe, leave your beautiful comments down below. This is where someone writes beautiful comment, fair enough. And make sure you like two other comments down there so that the, the cream of the crop rises to the top. With that said, what's on sale? Let's find out. First up then, and I know one that Switch Corner mentioned he was going to add to his video, I think he might have used our footage, it's Trials of Mana. It was amazing being able to go to the Square Enix head office in London to play this one before, like about a month before anyone else. It was crazy, they had like this full sized cloud from Final Fantasy 7 and just other cool things you'd expect to find there. And sitting down to play this was just a delight. It's very much a remake of the original, which I can never pronounce, Seiken Densetsu 3, I think that's how you pronounce it. And it has an interesting mechanic whereby at certain parts in the game you can almost change classes. You become more powerful, turn into things like a monk. There are a number of really interesting side characters. They, they chose wisely in allowing you to either play the backstories of the different characters or you could skip them and just get a brief overview. Um, you can choose at the beginning of the game the different people you take along with you for your adventure and who you want to play as. And there's also some new game plus content in here as well. If you're going to do absolutely everything then you're looking at about 40 plus hours. It has a 10.6 gigabyte download and that sale goes on until the 5th of May so you might want to pick that one up. Ease 8 Lacrimosa of Dana was critically acclaimed across the board as you know or you may not know. There is a sequel number 9 that's also done quite well over on other consoles but it's coming to the Switch quite soon. Now this is an action RPG set on a small island and you gradually build up your base, find other survivors to join you. It has a brilliant story and the overall storytelling is excellent, probably one of its best aspects. But it also has dinosaurs. Who doesn't like dinosaurs? The Switch version runs really well. It is quite a hefty download at 14.7 gigs, but you're getting your money's worth. You're looking at over 70 hours if you want to do absolutely everything. And it's probably one of my favourite games on the Nintendo Switch. That sale goes on until May the 9th. Sometimes for whatever reason, you end up not being able to complete your favourite games. Or there are games in a series that are really highly you know, recommended by people, but you just don't have time to play them. And one that I've recently finally given some time to is Final Fantasy XII. And it's, I'd say this was really underrated, or maybe it came out at a time where not many people, not many people, sorry, got to play it. Certainly that was the case for me. And it's brilliant. It's really good. Just hit the bit where you get to ride a chocobo. Chocobo, how do you say it? And the world's actually lovely. It plays well on Switch. It's a nice one to enjoy actually in handheld mode. And it's set a couple of years after the Arcadian Empire won the war with the Kingdom of Dalmasca. It's got pirates in it, so it's got to be good, even though they are sky pirates. But it also has one of the better soundtracks. The Switch version includes HD visuals and the things that Square like to put in, like a speed up mechanic, auto save and other quality of life improvements. It's 12.6 gigs. It's over 100 hours if you want to do everything. But yeah, if you're looking for something new, um, I'd highly recommend this one. It's 50% off and that's until the 5th of May. It's time to kick ass and... <coughs> Oh wow, and uh, chew bubblegum apparently. Duke Nukem is amazing. It's an absolute classic. I know some of you said you hadn't picked it up when it dropped. It's now back down to that stupidly low price at 60% off. It's brilliant. It includes that campaign co-op that they added where if you can get eight players, it's just amazing. It's just absolute carnage having eight of you busting around the single player experience. So yeah, jump onto our Discord. The links are in the description. I'm sure we can sort out some games. It's got all the legendary voiceover magic from Johnson John. There's new music in there. They did 
a bit of jiggery pokery with the 3D engine moving away from the, the old system to a fully 3D realized system and you can actually switch between the two and see the difference. There's HD rumble, there's gyro controls and for what? About the price of a portion of chips and a Savaloy. That's a bit of a win right there. It's a 611 megabyte download and that sale goes on until May the 5th. The complete edition of Jurassic World Evolution is 45% off. This is well worth it. I thought it was okay at launch. Look, performance wasn't great. This is a Nintendo Switch running this massive strategic game and we don't have many in-depth strategy games on Switch, but it still ran okay. It was a blurry. It did have that kind of blur over the top. It's been patched a couple of times since and we featured it in our all patched up series. It's still not perfect, but it's more than good enough for most people. There's tons of different dinosaurs. You have to muck around with their genomes, you send people out on excursions to get different fossils which then help you to research different species and they can also escape and you might have to get a helicopter and manually control it, fire in the dark to uh, to tranquilize an escaped dinosaur while it chows down on one of your guests heads. It's brilliant, it captures a lot of the feeling of the Jurassic Park films and there's a lot of the same voice actors as you'd expect. This is a 5.7 gigabyte download and well it's, it's essentially infinite in terms of the amount of time you could spend playing it, it's one of those games. But there is a campaign here to work your way through and unlock all the different parks, it's going to take you a fair few hours, I couldn't put a number on it, I've probably put in about 25-30 hours already but I like to get my parks like covering the whole island as much as possible. Possible. That sale goes on until May the 11th. Another GOAT title here, we have Shakedown Hawaii, which captures that nostalgic feel of old school GTA, but actually puts on a lot of modern gameplay mechanics. You'll be uh, working hard to build up that empire, or should I say corporation, by doing different missions, having nice polite conversations with business owners to over... <coughs> um, to uh, help them and despite the visuals there's actually a really good storyline that under underpins the whole experience. Now we've actually got a full review of this on the channel and I know for a fact it's one of Glenn's favourite games. If you liked things like Retro City Rampage, Hotline Miami then this will certainly click with you. It's only 172 megabytes to download which is a joke. It's the lowest it's ever been, it's £8.99 and that's until May the 6th. One that I reviewed on the channel and the first time it's dropped so significantly is Persona 5 Strikers. This is 25% off, which is a decent drop. It may even be 30% in America and 25% in the UK. I'm not really sure why that works, what that's all about, but yeah, it's seen a decent drop. I really enjoyed it. You join obviously the Phantom Thieves in a bit of a hybrid. It's almost split into open-ish open, open -ish areas where you're doing some investigation. There's a bit of visual novel in there. And then there's the beat em up side of the game that pits you against loads of different enemies. You can do sneak attacks and things like that and you'll be jumping all over the shop. There's a couple of DLCs out for this one, the All Out Attack Pack and the Persona Legacy Background Music Pack. I enjoyed the game. I thought that the price, I mean, I'm not sure if the price fully reflected at launch. It just seemed a tiny bit too high for me. But it's it's an enjoyable experience, particularly if you enjoy it and like these characters. It's around about 60 plus hours if you want to do absolutely everything. Again, it's seen a couple of patches, I believe, since launch, as there were a few iffy moments in performance. It's still not perfect, but it's better than it was. It's a download of 11.9 gigs, and that goes on until May the 10th. Disclaimer, I believe this one is only on sale in the US region, unless you want to get it from Amazon where third party sellers are selling it for 29 quid here in the UK. Catherine Fullbody was a big surprise for me. I hadn't played it, but I'd heard a lot about it. It's completely insane. It's a mixture of visual no novel and puzzle game where you get sucked into this weird dimension and you have to make your way to the top of, I guess, these almost like towers and you'll be hearing the words edge, edge, edge a lot. It's full of sheep and weird things and there is a co-op mode as well which I've, I've recently had a bit more experience of and it's brilliant fun. You play as Vincent who basically has a slightly insane long-term relationship with Catherine. It's a little bit risque at times and I think it's really well written. It's totally bizarre, something a little bit more abstract and different but if you've not experienced it check out my review because I was surprised how good it was. It's around about 16 hours if you're going to com just complete it but way longer if you want to do everything and those puzzle sections get super tricky. It's 14.2 gigs and the sale goes on until May the 6th. There's loads of different Disgaea games on the Nintendo Switch, but we're about to get Disgaea 6 Defiance of Destiny, so I'd say it's a good time to go for Disgaea 5 
with a complete edition which is half price so it's about $20 or your regional equivalent and they're brilliant games they're not short games I mean this one has the potential to be hundreds of hours long if you want to do everything but you could bust through the main campaign a lot quicker than that this version also includes eight bonus scenarios a few new characters and classes basically all of the DLC that was released they're easy to pick up and play you will get addicted to them it's, it's almost a given um, and the bizarre and slightly unusual character and cast and feeling this this game has uh, really clicked with me. I enjoyed it a lot. It's a 6.4 gigabyte download and that sale goes on until May the 10th. If you're interested, I think the sequel is out in June. You'll have to let me know. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's June. June the 29th in the EU and well, it's already out in Japan. you ever play a game and you absolutely love it and then you go and check out reviews and people's opinions of it and, and no one else seems to agree with you that's how I was with Assassin's Creed 3 I remember getting it back on PC and I just loved it I don't know what it was trudging through the snow I, was, I remember just being gobsmacked by those snow physics as you're walking through the uh, through the earlier stages and also when you're playing as a child as well I thought that was so cool but then uh, no one else seemed to share that opinion so they said that Connor was a bad character and he was too moody I, I liked him and I still like him. Um, Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered, it launched on Switch. Performance, eh, wasn't great. They've gone back since and it's patched up nicely. It runs much better than at launch and most of the reviews you'll see heavily criticised it because of the poor performance. But now at 60% off with those improvements, I'd say it's a good time to pick it up. It includes gyroscopic controls. It's uh, quite a big download size of 14.6 gigs. But if you've skipped it because of the negative reviews about Connor being not a great character, it's actually, in my humble opinion, a very good game and that goes on until May the 15th. Now we have our hidden gem of the week. Hidden gems for me have become games that I've never played because we have to play so many games for the channel. If I haven't played it, it's quite unusual. So I've decided this week to pick up Mary Skelter 2. And it does actually include the first instalment of the series, Mary Skelter Nightmares, although I just skipped straight to number two. I was a little apprehensive because I haven't actually played Mary Skelter 1, but it wasn't too much of an issue. It's a dungeon crawling RPG and it's very strange. It's set in the first person with some seriously messed up characters inspired by by fairy tales. I think they've been definitely reading the Grimm's fairy tale school of uh, fairy tale characters and it's turn-based battles which again is slightly unusual for that first person system but it works really well. It took a little bit to get into this one but I've been really enjoying the magic system. There's loads of different characters that are reasonably well written and it is nice that it does include the first game. It's a 10.4 gigabyte download and well to do this just the main story you're looking at about 50 hours and the sale goes on until May the 12th. Brilliant. It's that time of the week that I absolutely love where we look at two games that you should avoid for various reasons, which we'll go into, but mainly because they're crap. First up, and it's the Caligula Effect Overdose. We really wanted to like this. It had Persona vibes about it and certainly had a bit of a following, but the actual game world was incredibly dull. There's very little movement. There's very little life and the core mechanics uh, they just didn't really feel very enjoyable to play. Jace reviewed this one for us on the channel. I believe it received 44%. And look, if you're a hardcore fan, then there's something for you here. But for people looking for the persona, you might want to pass on this one. Then we've got the Princess Guide. And the problem with this one was it had really confusing gameplay mechanics and was also very repetitive. This isn't an outright avoid, but I'd say it's worth checking out that review before you consider it. And for most players, repetition and confusing mechanics when you've got a giant backlog equal potentially an avoid. Still, that being said, there were some nice aspects to the gameplay. So do check out the full review. That's it for this week. Please let us know any avoids that you've uh, had the unfortunate fortunate uh, experience of purchasing and, and then regretted massively. And do subscribe if you enjoy the channel. Thanks to our patrons. Again, three new ones this week. I'll make sure your names go at the start of the Patreon list before you eventually get integrated. Check out the merch if you want something that says see ya or happy gaming on it, if uh, that's your thing. And just a big thanks to all of you that watch. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!